Today we're going to start a brand new, what I hope to be, series of videos comparing different key leaders of cult movements with each other. And today it's going to be uh, recommended or requested, I should say, by one of my uh, subscribers. And they wanted to know how similar or different were L. Ron Hubbard and Joseph Smith. And so I did a little digging and uh, I have 15 things that I'm going to share with you today that talk about the similarities between L. Ron Hubbard and Joseph Smith and the movements that they founded. And so this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. Number one is that they were both expert storytellers. L. Ron Hubbard wrote science fiction. He wrote tons of books before he wrote Dianetics and founded Scientology. And Joseph Smith was is known even as a child for telling elaborate stories, some of which actually ended up in the Book of Mormon when he was even a small child. Number two, they created a fascinating book. It's not easy to pull off writing a book or coming up with a book and claiming that it has divine origin and convincing people that they should actually take that claim seriously. And so I have to give them both credit for writing a book that became the basis of a religion that now has several, several followers throughout the world. Number three, L. Ron Hubbard tried to kill himself if a um, woman would not marry him. And Joseph Smith said that an angel threatened to kill him if certain women did not marry him and he were to start polygamy. Number four, they both were known for running and hiding from the law at different times in their life. In fact, both of them were hunted down by the U.S. government. Number five, they were both magicians. L. Ron Hubbard is known for uh, having a friend named Jack Parsons, who is well known within the occult circles. And Joseph Smith had a criminal record for treasure digging, in which it was a practice that was based in the occult, in which he promised people that he could find treasure on their property. And he, even to the day of his death, had a Jupiter talisman on him on the day of his death. He was deep and steeped in magic and the occult. Number six, Hubbard is actually an old Mormon name. Thank you to a user on Reddit for pointing that out. Number seven, Hubbard wrote science fiction before Dianetics. Joseph Smith practiced treasure digging before finding the golden plates. So both of them had plenty of practice in their craft before finding and striking gold. Number eight, they both concentrate more on self than they do on God in their religion. And Scientology really tries to get away from the notion of God altogether. And in fact, it tries to, it's more pseudo-psychology than anything else. And Joseph Smith, well, his concept of heaven that he pushed on his followers is that they will one day actually become gods. And in fact, they are in their identity gods in embryo. And so in Heaven is a lot more associated with being reunited with family than it is living with God. Number nine, they both play a larger role in their religions than God, and they're more a Messiah than Jesus. And I know that followers of both religions would probably take offense to that, but that's just an objective, um, or I, guess I should say subjective, um, observation from the outside looking in. Number 10, they both keep secrets about the religion from their members, which is a classic mind control and cult move. Number 
11, you'll be lost without the church, which again, mind control, uh, they are the only source of salvation there. Everybody is lost outside of them. And definitely if you are a part of them and then you leave the group, then you are really, really, really in bad shape. Number 12, they place excessive financial conditions for church membership. Scientology does so through the auditing process and the higher levels you go and to remove certain engrams and to get rid of MEST, uh, which is uh, matter, energy, space, and time, I believe. Um, to get rid of those, it costs more and more the more you go up into the group. And of course, uh, the requirement of tithing within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Number 13, believers defend their religion with, it's a good organization, instead of, I know that it's true, and I know it's completely true. That Mormons will say, we believe that this is the one true church. But when you talk to them about certain aspects of history, or when you talk about truth claims, or you show contradictions, or things that uh, they are ignoring from past leaders that they taught, they will not say, well, I know that that really happened the way that, I, I, that they teach it happened. They will say, uh, it's a great organization, or I know that the church is true, um, regardless of whether that particular thing really happened or it is true. And uh, number 14, they read only faith-promoting materials, which is another classic mind control move. And so for Scientology, that would be Dianetics and going through the audio processes and all the different things that come out through that. And then for the uh, Mormons, that would be their scriptures, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, along with the end sign, along with going to general conference twice a year, along with everything and anything that's coming out from the church, current time, ignore the past and ignore the internet. Number 15, Detractors are labeled liars and anti, which again, another classic cult move. And so I want to know that's 15 similarities. I want to know if you have more. I want to know if you have questions about anything I said. I want to know if you have recommendations for future comparisons between key leaders in different cult movements. And so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and a thumbs up on this video if you like the content for today. Share this video with others who are interested in cults and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.